Welcome to Coleman Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Lance Sexton, good to see you. Delaney good Sexton, there. good to see you. Uh, this broke on Tuesday. This show is going to be all about the alleged Chris Roglieri fraud, but I think we can put ledge in soft italics because bluntly all he had to do is show where the $52 million is, and A, he would not be filing bankruptcy that came out this morning, Delaney reported. B, he would not have had his company seized by the court. And and uh, D or whatever, his car collection, uh, has it been seized yet, Delaney? Do we know that? Or um, I'm not sure if it's been seized, but he had to turn over all the insurance and he cannot touch those cars at all. Can't and what get about, them, can he wear the $2 them. million dollar watch that he bought? Can he wear that or is that? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll give him uh, you're, you're uh, innocent to a proven guilty, Lance. But all he needs, and by the way, we've, we've got, we poured over these court documents, and there is a piece of paper in there showing that there's $52 million on deposit with RBC Capital, Delaney. Um, but the uh, trustee, his word says he can't find the money. So we're not making this stuff up. Anyway, uh, why is this important? I want to set out, I want to put this into context. Look, I know Chris. Lance covered uh, for me too. last year. Lance knows Chris. Everybody in the loan broker industry knows Chris. Chris set him up, set himself up as the spokesman, as the advocate, as the chief ethics officer of how to correctly do loan broker business. Lance, who did they do business with? They do it with small business lenders. Yes, absolutely. And uh, this conference that he put together that I substituted for you, Bob, is an enormous conference, well attended by brokers, but also well attended by small business lenders. And uh, absolutely, the breakout breakout session I section I did, Bob, I took a picture of it because it may have been one of the largest crowds I've ever had in a breakout session. No, absolutely. Last year they drew 1,800. This year they're planning and doing over 2,000. They've booked George Foreman as the keynote speaker. The um, an important part of a lot of lenders' business comes from the loan broker segment, and th this is going to cause problems as the Carriagi fallout still continues. We can't even with the letter from SBA. On you have on dealing with uh, new agreements with LSPs, we haven't even touched that. SBA has always looked at loan agents with a jaundiced eye, and this is going to cause not gonna help. huge ramifications uh, for the brokers and for wanting to do business with brokers. So it's unfortunate because who's going to get hurt? Small business well, borrowers. Yeah, and there are a lot of outstanding, fully ethical brokers out there that absolutely that we're may talking, have to yeah. take extra yeah. steps uh so no it, it's 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 um he's causing a lot of damage and chris i'm sure you're gonna see this but um dude you're a <laughs> your narcissistic behavior has to end today and s solve your issues and that mm -hmm. i can say that to you and i'm um Man, you're it's it's too bad what's happening. Okay, Delaney, what do we got? Um, well, going along with uh, what you're saying in the beginning, the complaint does call these factual allegations. I thought that was interesting wording, but to summarize the actual alleged fraud, he oh, no, go was... back to the go back to the pictures. <laughs> I like the cars. <laughs> go ahead. There you go. Um, so he was telling these businesses that he was going to extend lines of credit. All you needed to give him was a specific amount to, to put into an interest credit account so he could deposit it. Um, and for at least 10 different companies who are listed in the complaint, um, they either never received the loan, received almost none of it, or never got a return on their deposits. And that is where this issue was created. Let me interrupt you. The delay. Let me tell you what the pitch was. Go ahead. You can go to the next slide, Anna. And by the way, Lance, this is not a new concept. If the deal seems too good to be true, guess what? It is. He went it to is. ten. He went to ten companies. He called it. Uh, help me out, Delaney. Interest credit deposit. Mm -hmm. So, the, I know the one example was um, an apartment complex, seventy-five million dollars. 
the pitch to the developer was, you give me $16 million. That goes into a separate account. That is prepaid interest. So uh, that normally we want equity injections of $16 million. Not in yeah. this case. That money is going to be set aside and you're going to get it all back because it's going to pay for the interest on the loan. That's what the lender wants. And um, they and, and so in this interest credit deposit, he also promised to pay for fees. I know there was one where he was actually going to do the permitting fees and whatever. But the pitch was, you wire these funds to me. We're going to close simultaneously. All the money goes in. It's just like a down payment. And that money is missing. Go, to, uh, go ahead, Delaney. So among these 10 companies, it ranged anywhere from 3 million wow. to I believe about 16 million missing dollars for a total of 63 million. Now the receiver has indicated, I believe is it 52 or 53 million dollars that is missing. Yeah, excuse um, me, excuse me, Delaney. Anna, go ahead and pull up that slide. We're on the wrong slide here. Yeah, sorry, Anna. I'm kind of mixing We're, this up on you a little bit. <laughs> We're going to make Anna earn her money today. Uh, the, right. the slide with the 10 projects, Anna. Anyway, the, the answer to your... There, there we go. So these are the 10 third-party borrowers that got that sent money. And look at the dates, Lance. Or I'm sorry, wow. uh, Lance, you're not presenting this. Delaney is. Look at the dates, Delaney. So this is over a period of, of what? Um, Just barely over a year. So. Mm -hmm. Right. Wow. And... Um, the answer to your question is the trustee has called this a Ponzi-like scheme. They have they have verified $63 million was paid by these 10 borrowers. That money went into uh, Prime's coffers. Some money under threat of litigation, et cetera, some money was returned, but the $52 million is the net figure that is missing. And wow. as the as the trustee says, Delaney, uh, it's sort of a red flag. I, I can't find the money. Yeah, I would I would agree that that is quite a red flag. Oh my goodness. So, okay, so now we have the fifty two million dollars, but there's more. It appears during this period that started in September twenty two, Mister Roglieri, Chris bought a few cars. Now you can bring up that slide. Um, Anna. he's allegedly had some fun with the stolen. No, funds, he didn't allegedly. He did have fun. He did buy <laughs> these cars. That's that's fact. Go ahead. So I <laughs> do want to clarify. I'm not sure if he bought all of these cars in the period. It seems like they said 10.1 million went towards luxury vehicles, but it seems like a lot wow. of it went to modifications on these supercars. I don't know a lot about cars, but um, based on this list, they seem to be pretty nice, and he was quite proud of them. Um, there were YouTube videos featuring his car garage, uh, videos of him going to tracks with his supercars, um, posts on social media. So he was quite proud. And I believe I heard he uh, spent 300000 just on mirrors for one of these cars. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you guys. If I had $300,000, I, I would not be buying mirrors. On. You wouldn't but... be buying mirrors? <laughs> Yes. Um, Lance, go back. Go back a slide. Bob, it just uh, this brings back a memory, Bob. Uh, when I first got out of college and worked for FDIC, we closed a bank, and I was in charge of the cars, and we got to drive said cars, uh, bank cars. Uh, it was a Chevrolet Citation that I got to drive, not this list here of amazing <laughs> cars. <laughs> The citation was the citation was probably worth about five grand. So, uh, well, I do like that the trustee put in the court filings the color, and I notice that there's no silver, or whatever. There, it's all I, I, yeah. I don't know what Nero Daytona Daytona is, but I imagine that's a nice color. Yeah. Anyway, um, there was a side article that said a lot of these cars they're they're one offs. As Delaney, Delaney, how much did he spend to modify these cars? Do we know? Because I guess that's huge in the car industry, car, car collector million. industry. Yeah, I think 10.1 million, at least with the stolen funds. Now, whether I'm sure he's made more modifications with his own money outside of that, 
But um, there was even an article. He had essentially like a one of a kind car. Um, this article was just really emphasizing all of the modifications he made on it. And uh, it was self. It, go ahead, Lance. What did the speedometer say on well, that car? Go ahead, Delaney. This is Delaney found this. Go ahead, Delaney. I'm going to let you set this one up. Yes, um, our team did a good job with this one. It seems that he was already a bit of a topic of conversation on the website Reddit, where somebody found this image that he posted on his public story at the time, going 185 miles per hour to get some barbecue at a restaurant before it closed. That's uh, that had to be some Jack Stack barbecue out of Kansas City, guys. No, no, no it's an, no Albany. It was on I eighty seven, Lance. Oh. Maybe he was going to Kansas City. Who knows? But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, I'm a big fan of barbecue, but I will say I don't think I've ever desired barbecue to this degree. No, no, not at all. Hey, wow. uh, um, we're gonna get into some more stuff, but real quick, I want to talk about. Uh, Lance, what what are you doing uh, February 29th, Leap Day? Why is this webinar important? Uh, well, we need to have people sign up for this because I see a trip to Albany in Delaney's future. <laughs> we <laughs> the, got expenses, gang. <clears throat> we're going to talk about the various insurance coverages that are required to properly close your SBA loan. Uh, we're going to cover all 15 of the types of insurance that potentially need to be obtained uh, to properly close an SBA loan. So for your SBA loan closers and just your SBA loan closers and underwriters and just SBA team members, this is an important webinar. So get your people signed up. Very good. Thank you for that. Uh, what else did he buy, Delaney? Um, it certainly didn't end with luxury vehicles. Um, almost 5 million or just over 4 million went to luxury watches jewelry and antiques and it seems like the very prime watch in this case was um uh rm 5201 tourbillon skull watch um to give you some details these seem to be pretty fancy limited edition i'm not very well informed on watches but based on some of the details there's a Grade 5 titanium skull and the upper and lower jaws hold the ruby of the tourbillon cage. Um, wow. Made of just really great material. And I believe it was 2.25 million? 2.275 million. He got a discount of $50,000. So. Oh, there you go. Okay. Yeah. And if you look at the top of the document, it says it was billed to Prime Capital Ventures and shipped to Prime Capital Ventures. Wow. How do you even get the desire for a 2.2? If I if somebody gave me 2.25 million, I wouldn't be on this show right now. I'd be retired somewhere. <laughs> you wouldn't be uh, wearing wearing the uh, watch here, Lance. No, I'd uh, be afraid. I, I mean, it, it's uh, yeah. look look. We we've covered a lot of these stories. This is probably this is the most egregious in terms of purchases. We talk about cars but delaney it's always been a one-off or two cars um never never a, lo a laundry list there's been jewelry and other things never a laundry list uh, of a two million dollar watch this he um this is definitely a first for us in our coverage alone fraud he's quite the collector you can say very good bob, um but, but it didn't stop always, there go ahead go ahead lance I, i'm so bob i've always wanted a rolex watch but it looks like that's like a Dollar General watch. Uh, <laughs> I'm that on that list of watches there. My Rolex, the Rolex I wanted was a couple thousand dollars, not a couple million. He also bought a house, Delaney. He sure did. It is a three point seven million dollar Virginia Beach house. Um, he claimed that it was an investment by Prime. Or that's what he said to the receiver. Um, in reality, Kimmy Humphrey, who is also named on the complaint, was living in this house, uh, was only paying utilities, no rent, no insurance, and he claimed the taxes were current, but actually owed about 40000 at the time. Wow. And? 
And it doesn't end there either. 835,000 to be specific, but it sounds better when you say almost a million in private plane trips. Yeah, unbelievable. So where are we? This is where we are. He, uh, oh, go ahead. I'll let you, That that's the recap. Um, he was forced into chapter seven. The receiver is in control of what they call the estate. The receiver has petitioned the court, all of these things in order to make a claim against these assets to get the assets to liquidate the estate, to go ahead and pay the creditors those 10 people. It's very sad, Lance and Delaney, yeah. in reading some of these stories. All of these people wired the funds in good faith. They're all companies, uh, developers, um, solar um, solar energy, wind farms, and all of the in engineering firms. All of them tell the similar tale now. Uh, their, their, um, their businesses are in jeopardy. They've had to fire people. Yeah. We we can laugh about some of this stuff, but this is real world implications. People are losing their jobs. There's uh, holes in the ground and um, the, 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 a lot of people are getting hurt, Lance. Yeah, Bob, this kills me because someone who's supposed to be a huge proponent of job creation through finding a home for loans. Uh, you know, I was talking to somebody about fraud the other day. The big problem with fraud is fraud and it does create some investigation work but when a company has fraud like he took deposits and didn't return the money people lose their jobs people lose their careers uh you know somebody worked at one of these companies and walked in one day and was given a a, a slip that said they no longer had a job because the company lost millions of dollars giving it to this gentleman who went out and bought cars and took trips and and bought a watch that I would be afraid. No, I'm sure. Of. I'm sure. You know, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure we will get a letter from the attorney, and that's fine. We've I've gotten a lot of letters from attorneys before, um, but um, that's fine. That he can buy all these things, and people buy things, and good for him. But the the question is again, allegedly, then where's the fifty two million dollars? That's the question we're all asking. How come these uh, um, loans weren't funded? And so I, I think the, uh, the the balance has to be okay. These are alleged. These are all alleged. But uh, what's the story? And why did he file? Then he has to file Chapter Eleven. You know. So it's a it's a sad, sad case. Um, Delaney, there's a lot more coming. What's the next step? That's a great question. I'm going to be watching this case. That's for sure. <laughs> I uh, get your. Uh, well, by the time uh, yeah, winters in Albany is, uh, but I think by the time uh, uh, summer in upstate New York is absolutely beautiful. beautiful. Oh, so absolutely. Um, well, very good. Uh, we are off on Monday, and then I will be out of town next Friday. So Delaney and Lance will have it, and they'll do an update on that. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today for Coleman Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Have a great Have a wonderful weekend. weekend.